Good morning, good morning, guys. It's your boy, Mark and MUFC fan, and you know what it is, guys. Smash those likes and subscribe. Help the channel grow. 500 subs. Check on the road to 1K. Let's make this community grow bigger, guys. Keep smashing those likes and sharing it around as you get the latest news in the transfer market, the scouting of the youth market, the young academy graduates, and the Man United women's team and senior players of the men's team. You know, you're getting all-round information here, and you get the information from a balance. You get it all. You don't get my views alone, but you get all of the views, even your own. Big up to all of you joining me, and it's your boy. I'm sorry that I couldn't be doing this live this morning, but I needed to give you the information on time, like I usually promise, but I have to get some sleep. So while you're watching this, guys, please don't forget to smash a like and share it around. And leave your comments so I can react to them when I wake up. I will be I will be active around mid, the middle of the afternoon to bring you the match reaction as well as any breaking news because I'm looking and I'm thinking and what I'm hearing is there's a possibility of something that might brighten your smiles because I know there was some little bit of a disappointment seeing Rasmus Hoyland leaving the pitch early as well as Lenny Rowe limp off the field. But I assure you guys, the report coming in on the youngsters is that it's just a precaution and they will be back soon. So don't worry about that, guys. But let's get into the news right now. And it's Manchester United moving in the market, guys. And like I'm saying to you, look at it, look at it. Report Manchester United pounced on transfer collapse for 16.5 million buy and star. And what are we talking about, guys? We're definitely talking about the current deal that Manchester United have been reported to be making to secure the services of none other than Mazarawi, guys. And Mazarawi is going to come in and he's been said to give Man United full priority over all other clubs for the transfer. He wants United. United wants him. And it's a deal to be done because his agent, Rafaela, you know, inherited the client base of his former agent, who would be none other than Mina Raiola. So, guys, it's interesting because, you know, they have a deep relationship with Manchester United, and now it's put coming to fruition because let's get into this story really quickly. Manchester United potential signing, what's been said in recent update from Team Talk, Manchester United are looking to secure the services of Bayern Munich defender Nusa Masrari. This pursuit follows West Ham United's failed attempt to, to bring the right back to the Premier League. Fabrizio Romano has provided insight into the negotiation, indicating that Maserari's transfer fell through due to the contract disagreements with West Ham, valued initially at £13.5 million plus £3 million in add-ons. Team Talk quotes, Ten Hag views Maserari as someone who can get the best out of right winger Anthony, as all three work together at Ajax, the Dutch Giants. This highlights the strong link between Maserari and Premier League clubs, particularly Manchester United, which are eager to strengthen their squad to challenge the likes of Manchester City, Arsenal, and, of course, Liverpool. Guys, Manchester United have already signed Joshua Zixi, as you know, and Len Euro, who came off the field injured. Joshua is still on vacation, though, but they're looking to add more players to bolster the squad. Maserari signing is seen as a move to replace Aaron Rambasaka, whose future at Old Trafford is uncertain as he's reportedly eyeing a move to Inter Milan. He's already, a, a, you know, accepted terms with Milan, so he's definitely looking to go there. Guys, look at the percentile of the fullback sacks, 18 and 144 minutes in the last 365 days for Maserari, and his possession, his defending is in red, his possession is in cream, and his attacking is in green, guys. Look at the possession here. 97% pass completion, 85% 85 assists or percentage in assists. You know, assisted goal percent XG, XAG is 68. Non, non penalty XG is 61. You know what I mean? Look at his performance here, guys. Blocks, tackles, in, and interceptions 81. Aerial percentage of aerial duels 1, 61%. Of dribblers, tackles 64%. Progressive passes. Recorded 76, 89 touches per game, successful take-ons. Guys, he's, he has some really decent stats. As we know, he's had some injuries, but the 26-year-old has an impressive profile, standing at 1.83 meters tall. He's made 19 appearances for the Bundesliga side in five, five in the UEFA Champions League and one in each DFB Pokal and DFL Super Cup in the 23-24 season, totaling in 29 appearances with four assists in all competitions. 
Maserari has shown an ability to contribute offensively. Internationally, he has been capped 28 times by Morocco, scoring two goals. Maserari's ability to balance defensive duties with attacking contributions makes him a tracking prospect for Manchester United. His performances at Bayern Munich have demonstrated his reliability and versatility on the pitch, making him a key target for the Red Devils. Guys, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. As we know, wan is, is linked with a move to, to Inter Milan where he's said to have already agreed terms. Let's see how it works out in the next in the next couple of weeks, the likelihood of this transfer happening is very high. According to Transfer Market, his value stands at 30 million euros. His current contract with Bayern runs out in June 2026, ensuring that the transfer fee will require a significant financial amount. Mazwari's agent, Rafael Pimenta, represents both him and Matthijs De Litt, another potential target for Manchester United. And the failure of West Ham bid opens the door for Manchester United, who need to act swiftly to secure his services. Offloading Juan Bissaka will be crucial to facilitate his transfer. With a year left on his contract, Manchester will need to negotiate effectively to create room for Man- Masrawi. Given Masrawi's familiarity with Ten Hag and the system from their time at Ajax, this transfer could significantly benefit the Reds. The agent's eagerness to finalise a deal following the collapse of West Ham move adds to urgency to the situation. If United can manage the finances, finances and offload Juan Bissaka, Masrari's addition in the squad looks likely and beneficial. Guys, what I'm saying to you right now that it's very possible that this player could become a Manchester United player in the next 48 hours. Watch this space. It's already a ticking clock and the race is on, guys. So I'm going to you know, shift a little gear into one of another target that we are looking at. Yes, and this target is none other than Matthijs De Litt. Guys. You know, they have been said that we have been hitting a transfer deadlock with Matthias De Litt and Bayern Munich as well, as they are trying to get somewhere in the region of 50 million pounds and million euros. And we're trying to pay somewhere in the region of 40 million, you know, because we offered them 35 million pounds, which roughly is 42 million euros. Now, I would like to assure you guys that there is room and wiggle room. Manchester United's pursuit of Matthijs De Ligt continues, but they are currently 15 million apart from the valuation. Now, negotiations are currently in a deadlock as Manchester United don't want to pay the 50 million plus, and in bonus payments that Bayern are currently asking for the Dutchman, and the Bundesliga side have no plans to lower their valuation on De Ligt, who played 30 games all co- across all competitions last season, which kind of debunks the fact that he was injured, right? Bayern Munich increases the offer of Bayern Munich. L- L- Leverkusen's Jonathan Tarr. Record Meister, according to... So this deal is kind of tied into to a knock-on effect, but the Bundesliga champions by Leverkusen believe that their latest bid still doesn't meet their valuation. Tarr is 28, has reached an agreement in principle to join Bayern, but the two clubs are yet to find an agreement, which has a knock-on effect of Manchester United's pursuit of the lit. Although a move for, away from the Allianz Arena looks plausible, Uli Holness would be, wouldn't be against the lit remaining at the club. With Sky Germany, and if Bayern pursues fate of Tar fail, that may be the case. So we're hoping that they get the deal for Jonathan Tar over the line in the next 24 hours, guys. There is said that they are still in talks and they are planning to get the deal done and finalized by Monday because they need to know what's going on. Their preseason has already begun and they need to get Tar in. So, guys, look and watch this space. His agent is also Rafaela Pimenta. So the deal with Manchester United is kind of being done like a double deal because we're dealing with the same club in effect for two of their players. So watch this space, guys. This deal could be completed in the next 24 to 48 hours. You can be hearing possibly all teams agreed in the coming hours of today or possibly tomorrow morning. Guys, let's keep it moving. It's going to be really short and sweet, this one, and you're going to get all the facts straight up and inside and let's jump into the Manchester United's transfer strategy, Ugarte and beyond. And guys, you already know that all the players we're talking about, we have already agreed personal terms with each and every one of those players. Manchester United in this transfer are balancing ambition with financial prudence. As the summer transfer window progresses, United find themselves in a familiar position, juggling high ambitions with the realities of a financial constraints. According to James Marshman of Team Talk, the Red Devils have made significant moves already but are still looking to bring in more reinforcements to elevate their squad for the 24-25 season. And the key targets on agreements, as you know, Manchester United have reached an agreement on personal terms with PSG midfielder 
Manuel Ugarte. However, a deal is not yet secured as negotiations continue over the transfer fee. PSG valuation is 60 million euros, which is 51.1 million pounds for Ugarte and remains a sticking point. This financial caution comes in the wake of recent signings Joshua Zitzi and Len Euro, who together cost the club 88.7 million pounds. However, we have only paid 32 million of that 88 million pounds for to get both players. The rest will be paid on installments. The pursuit of Ogarte highlights United's intent to strengthen their midfield, but also it underscores the financial balancing act the club must perform. With the Premier League's profit and unsustainable rules looming, United need to offload players to make room for new signings. Casemiro is one of those names linked with a potential exit to finance Ugarte's arrival. Now, should that move for Ugarte fall through, there have been one or two, you know, options looked at. You know, they have their eyes on Monaco's Youssef Fofana as a cheaper alternative. Fofana, who's set to leave Monaco, has drawn the interest of Milan. However, Milan's valuation of the player has led to a stalemate opening the door for United to potentially swoop in. Radcliffe's strategy has been to negotiate hard on transfer fees, a tactic that has seen multiple initial offers for targets being rejected. This cautious approach is a reflection of the club's need to stay within financial regulations while still aiming to rebuild and compete at the highest level. Guys, as you can see, Manuel Ugarte there, eyes on the ball and going, driving through the midfield. The reinforcements for the defensive situation in midfield is going to be amazing. United also target new fullbacks on both flanks. The injury issues faced by Luke Shaw and Terrell Malassia last season have necessary for such reliable options, and it's going to be interesting to see if Ferdi Cardioglu is among those names to be contested. So it's going to be interesting, guys. There's going to be lots of moves to be happening in the next 24 to 48 hours. As you know, Man United is trying to wrap up all their business while they are on tour. So not because they're on tour, they're not doing business, guys. And I would like to bring you some other information coming in. Hot of the press, Greekside, P-R-O-K, reached verbal agreement to sign ex-Manchester United. One, the kid, Shola Shaw retire. And he's, you know, a very talented youngster. He was playing in the under-21s last season, but he has, you know, he has played a few senior minutes under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but since then has not really been in favor with the other two coaches, Ralph Ragnick or Eric Ten Hag. Shortire left United at the end of this season following the expiration of his Old Trafford deal, and he is now in foot in advanced talks to join the, 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 the Greek champions of 23-24. Shorty set a club record in 2021 when he became United's youngest ever player in Europe, having featured in a nil-nil draw with Rio Sociedad. He had become United's seventh youngest player ever when he came on in place of Marcus Rashford during a match against Newcastle in 2021. The 20-year-old also wore the highest shirt number ever in 74 for a United player in a competitive match. His last appearance for the Red Devils came under United's clash in 22-23 Premier League season, Crystal Palace. On that occasion, Shortire got 15 minutes of action. He would proceed to spend time out on loan with Bolton. United made efforts to try to convince Shortire to sign a new deal and extend his stay with them, but he turned down all their offers. Fabrizio Romano has now given an update at Shortire's future and revealed that he's one step away from signing for P.R.O.K. And Romano wrote on X, the Greek side P.R.O.K. have reached verbal agreements to sign the former Manchester United talent Shola Shortire Despite interest from England, Spain, MLS, and Saudi Club, Shorty is now expected to travel and sign next week. Shorty is available as a free agent after leaving Manchester United. And hats off to the young lad for showing his ambition and knowing what he wants to do with his life. Apparently, you know, he know he's going to get to play in the Champions League as well. He's going to be able to play in a league that is, is competitive enough. I think it will be good for his development. So I think he made a good choice. Let's see how he progresses, guys and congratulate him on his new move. Big up to Shola Shoretiri. Guys, coming in, last but certainly not least, and I know if you all heard the news, Everton have, have a problem on their hands, and the defender holds all the cards amidst Man United interest. And we're talking about none other than Gerard Branthwaite. Gerard Branthwaite has holding all the cards currently as we speak. The key, and the key to Everton's defensive dilemma as well, Manchester United's interest in Everton centre-back Gerard Brantwaite is a focal point in the summer's transfer market. 
Bradford, known for his strong defensive capabilities, has reportedly been offered a contract by United, which he has agreed to. However, the club's efforts to secure his transfer have hit a snag, with Everton, who demand a hefty £70 million for their star player. According to Kyron McCarthy from Team Talk, Brantwaite has been offered a 160000 per week contract by United, which he quickly agreed to. The significant wave is offered to testament to the United's determination to bring him to Old Trafford. However, it's also created complications for Everton, who are struggling to match this lucrative proposal. The impact on Everton. Under the guidance of Sean Dyche facing a challenging decision, the club has reportedly offered Brandwood a new and improved deal to retain his services. Despite this, the young defender remains undecided, largely due to the financial or law of United's offer. As McCarthy reports, it is said that he's rejected the terms and offers to him by his club. The United's offer so much more than Everton is the main reason for that. The power dynamic has shifted significantly, placing Brandwood in a strong negotiating position. Football pundit Stuart Press commented on, sp- on Talk Sport. The power is with the player at this moment in time. Pierce suggests that remaining at Everton for another season could benefit Brantway's development, but acknowledges the law of a move to a top club like Manchester United. The wider implications for Manchester United mean that for United, securing a top quality centre back is crucial. Eric Ten Hag's side team shows interest in several defensive talents, including Yelling Euro and Matthias De Litt. However, you go. Negotiations have proved challenging, with Lille being not the only club convinced to part with their player, Euro. Bradway's potential move to represent a significant investment in the future of United's defence. The club's willingness to offer substantial wages highlights their commitment to strengthening their squad. Yet, their reluctance to meet Everton's asking price indicates a strategic approach to negotiations. McCarthy notes, getting Everton to let Bradway go has been a particularly hard sell. And as the Red Devils large two bids far below 70 million asking price. Yes, it's going to be interesting, guys. But I would say this is my honest opinion on this player. He is a definitely a good player, but he's not worth paying 160k per week. In fact, he should not even be offered a contract higher than 60k per week, in my honest opinion. And he should definitely not is not worth more than 35 to 40 million pounds. So I think this is a deal that if we were to do it, we would seem to be weak. But that could just be my opinion, guys, and I could always be wrong. At the same time, I'm just thinking prospectively, we can probably get a player for the same price without having to pay all that cost. Guys, thank you so much for this. Sorry about that noise right there. You know how it goes sometimes. But big up to all of you joining me. And guys, just to give a slight recap on all that I've talked about, Shola Shoritiri has signed for a new club and is possibly going to be done and announced officially on Monday. And it's the Greek side, P.A.O.K., who have been, who are the Greek champions of 23-24 and they have taken in the young United Starlet and he will now be part of their project. He has refused the, off- the approaches of several English Premier League clubs, including Ipswich, as well as a few Spanish clubs and MLS teams, as well as a Saudi approach. Now, guys, United are in for a couple of players, and this is our priority this summer, and I would just highlight that. Matthias De Litt, it is said that the deal should be struck for somewhere in the region of £42 million. Let's see how that goes. Look out for this news within the next 48 hours. It's a hot one, guys, and I'm going to assure you that this has been the talk of Germany in this current moment that we would probably be getting him for somewhere in the region of £42 million. Guys, now there's also Manuel Ugarte. Talks are still still ongoing. And with João Neves all but yet to be named official, Manuel Ugarte is said to be going to be on a a lowered cost coming to Manchester United. PSG is going to definitely need whatever money they can to secure the services of their prized midfield option. And Manchester United are waiting on that situation to pounce and secure their priority option, which is Manuel Ugarte. Look out for that in the next 24 hours. It is said that Manchester United is trying to get the deal done with before, before, by in the next 40, 24 to 48 hours. Sorry, guys, about that. You know, a little bit long night for me watching the stream as well. I hope you guys were there and enjoyed it. Big up to you guys. Maserari is another target who shares the same agent as Matthias Delit in Rafaela Pimenta, and she is 
in heavy talks and consistent talks with Manchester United. Talks are said to be extremely advanced for both players who should be coming in on a double deal. Maserari is said to be somewhere in the region between 14 to 17 million pounds. Let's see if that deal happens in the next 24 to 48 hours. Matthias Delitz should be following suit because his price has also been now reached a level where they are willing to accept and negotiate payment terms with Manchester United. And if you have been paying attention to all our streams before, guys, you would see that I've mentioned this young star before, Ferdi Kadioglu, the Turkish left back who can also play right back, who can also play right wing, and he can also play central defensive midfield. He's a very ingenuitable player. He has, he has made himself available. He has a wide range of talent and ability to read the game. He performs very well anywhere he, he plays on the field, and he's versatile. And he can definitely cover and adapt on the left wing side and provide defensively and going forward, guys. I look forward to this option. And big up to all of you joining me because this guy might be the fourth the fourth player that we do sign after those three who are our priority signings. Guys, look forward to more updates coming to you today, live today in the middle of, of the Sunday afternoon. And yes, guys, I know it's Sunday afternoon, but Manchester United, if you've been, learned anything in the last few weeks, is that we are doing business and nothing is stopping us. And we've gone for players and we've acquired them all thus far. So, guys, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for joining me. Don't forget to smash a like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow immensely. Every single like you smash uh, suggests the channel to a possible another Manchester United man, fan and family member of our community. And this is the Manchester United and football fan community. Mark and MUFC fan, guys. It's your boy. Smash a like and subscribe. You know what it is. You're going to get the news, all of the news, a little bit of my views, and loads of your opinions as well. And we're going to get that in and share it around and make it great. Help the channel grow, guys, because we're going on the road to 1K. And we're going to get there by the start of the new season. Hopefully, we're there by the, the you know, what do you call it? The community shield? When we kick off, we must be celebrating 1K on Mark and MUFC fan, guys. Big up to all of you joining me, and thank you so much for your growing support and your, and all the love that you show me. And I hope that I can do all as great a job each and every day in bringing you the information, be it the transfers or youth scouting or information on the Man United women's team or the, the men's senior team, guys. Hopefully, I cover it well enough that you are all entertained and you are all filled with just enough information so you guys could, you know, make your own determinations and not just be led astray sometimes by the opinions of the mainstream media. But big up to you guys watching me. Thank you so much for always being here, and I will see you guys later on. It's been your boy, Mark and MUFC fan, with the morning update. <laughs>